So far, my Blood Angels collection is coming along nicely, but it's definitely missing one of the coolest and heaviest models from the mid-90s. The Space Marine Dreadnought. Hi, I'm Ed, welcome to Minisodes, and in this episode I'll be restoring a Space Marine Dreadnought from 1995. I fished out the components from my jar of acetone and spent a therapeutic 30 minutes scrubbing off the old paint and primer. Once all the components were clean, I scraped off the mold lines and trimmed any flash I found. When that was done, I drilled out all the barrels and exhausts. I put all the pieces to one side and focused on the base. Like with the Screamer Killer, I wanted to give the model a bit of extra stature, so I built up the base with bits of old cork. I added some small stones from my basing mix, along with the obligatory skulls and razor wire to frame the Dreadnought in a suitably grim environment. Saving the smallest parts of the ground clutter for last, I carefully painted all of the negative space with some thinned down PVA, then sprinkled the base with sand and grit. I'd held onto the isopropyl water and PVA mix from last time and added this over the base with a pipette. This will act as a seal and prevent bits coming unstuck from the base over time. I glued the feet onto the base first, then attached the legs. This would be the first of five sub-assemblies. Essential really, as there are lots of nooks and crannies that would be hard to paint otherwise. I glued the sarcophagi and engine stack together. I then stuck all of the components to cork and wire to act as makeshift painting handles. It's prime time. I used Halford's grey primer to give all of the components an even coat of grey. I took my time with this, making sure I hit every angle and taking care not to apply too much paint. With the dread primed, it was ready for painting. I blocked in all of the black with Abaddon black. I then dry brushed lead belcher onto all of these areas. I used Mephiston Red to block in all of the red in several thin coats. As a bit of an aside, I listened to all of the unabridged audiobook of Men at Arms by Terry Pratchett whilst working on this project. This novel came out in 1993, and although I read it when I was younger, I'm only just now realising how prescient and brilliant Pratchett's work is. If you're running short of things to listen to whilst hobbying, I really can't recommend the Discworld novels enough, and John Coleshaw's narration is exceptional. Anyway, with the red and black blocked in, I threw caution to the wind, glued the arms, and reunited the torso with the legs. For the next step, I applied a pin wash to all of the red areas where there were recesses, like panel lines, around the rivets, and where bits of armour plates intersected. I added a highlight to the red using Evil Sun Scarlet. I applied this to all of the sharp edges and around the panels. For the next highlight, I mixed Evil Sun Scarlet with Dragonfire Bright and focused on the corners and upper areas. I took a break from the red here and applied grey sear to the multi-melter and the iconography such as the wings, skulls and scrolls. I added some white into my grey sear and added a highlight to the upper parts of the multi-melter and the icons. This would help accentuate the contrast when I painted them later. Ok, I felt ready to return to the red at this point and added a final highlight of Dragonfire Bright to my red highlights. 
contrast time. I painted the multi-melter and yellow, the scrolls and skulls skeleton horde, and the visor and lens warp lightning. I spent a bit of time painting individual details, like highlighting the multi-melter a little more by mixing white and flash kits yellow. I then moved on to the base and added a wash of Nulm oil to darken all the recesses. When that was dry, I dry brushed the whole base grey sear, then white. When the base was dry, I was ready to apply Drakenhof Nightshade over the whole base. For the banner, I chose one that was showcased on the super old Blood Angels Dreadnought found in the heavy metal section of the rulebook. Conveniently, it belongs to the third company, which matches my collection. I found the banner online, printed it out, and sprayed it front and back with matte lacquer. Overall, painting the banner took about 90 minutes. When the banner was finished, I fixed it to the pole with PVA and gave it another blast of matte lacquer to seal it. The tech marine then slowly lowered the banner into place, and after a few final touches and decals, the dreadnought was ready for action. It was a great feeling to add this wholesome piece of GW history to my cabinet. It will be seeing some games very soon, as soon as I've finished painting up a few more warriors for the Tyranids. Oh, and here's a sneak peek of what is to come in my next video. I love hearing from my subscribers, so please don't hesitate to comment below. That's all for this week, happy hobbying, and see you all very soon.